Hello, Grammar School. Colossus playing four tables, ten and all, six max. And <clears throat> the topic of today is going to be aggression. And I just started up the tables, and I want to immediately uh, record my this session as I am planning to play a lot more aggressive than I normally would at the micro stakes. Reason being is that I was just browsing through the Grinder School uh, forms and I saw a couple of a couple of topics which came back um, and it's all about aggression people who are getting outplayed by somebody on their left who is uh, constantly treating their steals from the button, or is constantly treating their uh, cutoff opens, and uh, actually giving them a really hard time. Well, a couple of years ago, when people were asking me this question here, the 21, 20, 3 bets me. Let's just take a look here. 3 bets 11%, and well, 2 out of 18 times. Uh, I am going to call and probably play back at him post flop. Uh, I'm just not gonna uh, let me run over. Uh, don't uh, don't won't let me uh, be run over by uh, a guy who is going to three bet me who is on my left. Uh, when he checks back this flop, uh, either he has pocket kings or some pocket pair between or lower than kings. So I'm probably gonna bet for three streets and. Uh, may try to make him fault on, <clears throat> on one of these streets, but he uh, already folds uh, one uh, to the first C bet. Now, as I, as I want to point out first, don't be calling uh, three bets with pocket sixes if you have no, if you don't know what you're going to do post flop. Uh, we get 3 bet now again by the same guy. We have ace queen. Uh, this is actually a lot more close, and the reason being is that we are out of position. Um, and he 3 bets us twice in a row. I think I'm gonna give him this. Sole reason is that we are out of position and we're gonna have a hard time. I could 4 bet for value, but I don't know if I have an, uh, if I have enough reads on him, so I'm just gonna let this go. Um, when somebody is on your left and is consistently three betting you, uh, a couple of years ago I would have just said uh, just switch tables, just move tables. But sometimes you just don't have the option either uh, in uh, today's poker environment you either are on a small side uh, and can't really switch tables uh, on this flop 6-6-8 six, six, with a 4-5 I have 5 I have to make a bet here uh, I really I do have uh, kind of a, a draw with the 7 uh, possibly when the other 8 comes off um, the, the, yeah I mean it's not a good card when he calls one so I'm gonna check and um, hopefully we And we're just falling against that bat. Uh, Jack Queen, we hit middle pair. Uh, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna get called by anything worse, in my opinion. With Jack uh, Queen here, so I'm just gonna check behind and uh, try to get some value on later streets, or let him make it maybe take a bluff. Uh, he checks again. I, I, I really don't see if I bet here. There's really no card I'm afraid of, so I'm just gonna check behind and on, um, definitely make a river bet if he checks to me. Uh, hopefully he d just doesn't believe me right now and makes a call with some pair of tens or uh, some silly thing. Uh, King ten. <coughs> Gonna make the call. It's only it only made a small min bet, and he seems like a really bad player. 43 only after seven hands, um, and I'm just planning here to if I hit top pair, uh, I'm basically stacking off uh, against 
uh, the guy on my right. So a couple of years ago I would have said you have a loose aggressive guy on the left, leave the table. Uh, nowadays I have to admit the games have become a lot more aggressive. You can't really switch tables and hope always to have no one sitting uh, on your left who uh, have no one sitting uh, sit, uh, aggressive one sitting on have no aggressive person sitting on your left so you kind of have to adapt and one of the first things I would do is first of all try to narrow try to uh, steal the blinds a little bit less if you have an aggressive uh, three better uh, which obviously uh, is going to be uh, is going to be the most straightforward response you can have against an aggressive three better. The other thing you can do is just call him more lightly. You have position and post flop. These guys aren't really that good. Um, on table number four, I isolated him basically on betting here uh, for uh, on betting big even. Uh, I have top pair. The flop is really drawing. Uh, so I was hoping to get called, but uh, he just falls. So most straightforward uh, response to an aggressive tree weather on your left is just to uh, narrow uh, your uh, buttons and maybe even cut off uh, opening range. Uh, that is probably going to work. Uh, I'm just gonna bet here on table number three because uh, it's the only way I can take it down. I, I can win this part. Uh, if he doesn't have any art, he's just gonna instantly fold. He's a, a nitty guy, 13-6. If the guy was uh, more of a calling station, I would not, probably not, or let him be a lot less inclined depending on the person uh, to make a C bet there. Uh, another response is, um, which is a lot harder and is what I uh, practically did in the first hand of this video, is with the pocket six. It's just call their loose three bets. Well, at least you think they're loose. Uh, call their three bets. But only call them when, mainly call them when you have positions. So, for instance, you open and cut over the button, and the one of the blinds three bets you, knowing that you fold a lot to three bets. If you have have watched my previous videos or adapted my kind of style, I fold a lot to three bets. Uh, it worked fine in the micro micro six for many many years. Um, uh, actually, I'm gonna three bet the tens, and I'm three betting them for value. Um, So what I did there with the pocket sixes is I called this three bet, thinking not really thinking that he is light immediately because I mean it was one of my first. I do have 70 hands on him and he did three bet like four out of 22 times, which is um, which is uh, a decent amount. But the thing is, I call with the pocket six not to set mine is because I know I'm gonna have position. I know that he's probably gonna have hands in his range which he is not going to be comfortable with uh, playing uh, post flop out of position and that's where my strength or hopefully soon your strength is going to come from is you are going to be able to read your opponent's hands much better when you have position like as I immediately said when he uh, checked back on the king deuce deuce flop uh, I'm gonna call here with my uh, oh wait! No, that was just, actually I should have just folded. Uh, but for ten cents, I'm getting one into ten uh, here on the call, uh, and I st still have the ace, which is probably good uh, if I hit it. So I was getting a decent price here to draw on table number two. Uh, somebody's at the door, but. Um, I'm sorry, this person is uh, gonna be left outside. I'm sorry for the noise, I don't know if you can hear it in the background. Oh my god, I don't wanna pause this video, this guy just is gonna have to uh, wait for an hour or so. Uh, pocket 9 is really bad flop. I'm not even gonna see about this, uh, especially not into a calling type of guy. It's uh, 1610. On table number uh, 
we have a nice flop. He doesn't have a big stack. I can easily bet like small and get it in uh, in in, uh, in three streets. I'm not checking back uh, against the guys playing 67-0. He's going to float me a lot. Okay, now I kind of lost my train of thought here with the, uh, with the doorbell. Uh, I was talking about a pocket six's hand. And what I wanted to say when you have this lose aggressive uh, three betting guys on your left, you should be more inclined to play, not play immediately, uh, go into a pre-flop war depending uh, depending on your hand. You can you can go in a pre, uh, kind of a pre-flop war, but without reads, uh, it's gonna be well without any history. It's uh, in my opinion that the micro sticks is just money money blown away. It's post flop where these people uh, definitely make the biggest mistakes and definitely in three bad parts. Here the king queen, I'm actually gonna call here with king queen. The guy is kinda on table number one. The guy is uh, kinda passive though and he makes it 5x with king queen suited. Uh, uh, I'm gonna call. Uh, it seems really bad and when we flop uh, this I'm just uh, jumping up and down my seat. I unfortunately he just checks, so I'm gonna bet. When he checks and doesn't see bet, seems again something like either ace queen or pocket pair between uh, bit lower than kings. So I'm definitely gonna bet to get some value out of this. And with the ace queen here, I am going to. Uh, Three bats, uh, a guy who opened well from middle position. Yeah, 20 cents is just a little bit uh, not enough for me uh, to be playing only for 20 cents. And the pocket nine is on table number four. On table number four, there's a flush. It's the guy who has been uh, who three bet at me before. He actually three bet at me twice. I have showdown value. I think he's kind of the guy who is definitely gonna take a step here if I make a bet. So I'm just gonna check behind and let him hang himself. Uh, if he makes well, he checks back again. That's I don't expect that from a kind. He seems kind of more aggressive guy. I didn't expect him to check back here uh, on the turn. Uh, and by the way, I was not falling to uh, a bet on the turn, uh, even if a nine didn't come. Uh, not even if a nine came off, a heart came off. Uh, I mean, I was going to call a turn bet. Uh, Ace four suited. I'm gonna raise it up. Table number three seems really needy, but that's well. It seems like decent players, which is uh, which isn't bad for uh, king high flop. Two people. Uh, I'm th thinking of c betting or just letting it go here. I'm just gonna bet like well, I was going to bet like sixty cents. Uh, I mean, if nobody has a king, uh, I'm gonna be good. I also doubt how uh, he seemed to think a bit about it. Daytona, I picked up showdown value. Uh, I can bet here again, maybe fold out a pair of nines, uh, charge for the flush draws. So I'm actually gonna make a bet again. Uh, if he falls, I'm really happy with that, uh, with the results. Uh, when the six of uh, spades comes off, I'm just gonna have to. For I don't think uh, betting here is going to do me much good. I'm thinking how the hand get there. I mean, in the sense that he did he limp free. I'm just gonna check behind here, and he had a king, so he's never gonna uh, give up. I'm just gonna check how the hand went because seemed kind of. A, 
weird spots uh, a seven I can raise no I'm just gonna check if I raise I'm never gonna get any, uh, a lot of money I don't want to get a lot of money in there with a7 uh, even if an ace comes off you're only gonna get paid off when you're beat so uh, we do get uh, a tree vet again by again by Ikamac. Uh, I have ace jack suited um, I'm again, I uh, have positions, so I'm just gonna call and make his life uh, kind of difficult post flop, but just not giving up so easily uh, versus aggression. And maybe he blows like a whole stack to me by just trying to bluff me off something. That's 250. Doesn't bet big. I'm gonna call him again. Oh, another king comes off, so chances that he has a king is way down. He might have like pocket queens, but I don't think he's gonna fold uh, pocket queens. So I'm just gonna check back. Might have aces also. Uh, I'm just checking back here, and uh, and he is indeed. So this is the whole point of my video. It's a, a, a excellent point, uh, essentially. This is like the typical guy that uh, that your guys are talking about. Um, and uh, nowadays in the forms, uh, he shows up with queen four suited, and just like, yeah, he well, not it's not half a stack, but it's it's a decent sized pot that he he lost. And the whole f reason is, I mean, four queen, he should never be three betting this. This has completely no value with queen four. Uh, Offsuit, so that's his first mistake. Second mistake, he's he's three betting against the purse. Well, he doesn't know that. He probably doesn't know me. Um, he might have some kind of a read on me. Well, uh, he might have stats on me, in which I'm folding to a lot of three bets, and probably that's why he's three betting queen four suited. Uh, I do get three bet again, but this is um, against the sixteen four guy, probably. 25, no, he never 3 bet before. Uh, I'm not gonna uh, play with 10 queen uh, in that position. You do have to be able to re. Oh, and he was short uh, also, I think. Yeah, Zoki is a short, so uh, I don't mind at all folding 10 queen there. Uh, if it was suited, mm, it's a lot closer. Because the suitedness gives you gives me a lot more options uh, post flop. I don't necessarily hit need to hit uh, a flush. Uh, a flush draw is also quite nice to play, and uh, even a backdoor flush can uh, uh, can be helpful in playing your hand. So I, I'm happy with how the video is going because on table number four we have this uh, typical uh, loose aggressive wannabe. Uh, trying to uh, push people out of the pot uh, with the pocket trees. I'm just gonna go here for set mining and hopefully get lucky. He didn't see about this flop. Uh, so Akamek kind of knows what he's doing because see betting this flop is. Yeah, it's looking for uh, into two people on table number four is looking for trouble. I mean, everybody and did hit that flop. Uh, I'm just gonna check, and I'm just gonna bet again here. Uh, maybe I still get pair on table number two by somebody who has two pair or something. Now he bets, which is kind of weird that he makes a bet there for seventy cents. I'm not gonna call here with three so. Uh, but it's a weird bet here on table number four. Um, I don't know what have, oh, I just uh, raised it up in, on table number three from the small blinds. My IC bet gets raised. And I'm gonna three bet here on table number. Oh, god damn it. I was going to three bet the six eight suited on table number two. But apparently I'm not fast enough. Because it looked like an actual uh, pure steel. Uh, 
only 20 hands though, right? Three seven king, really dry flop and ideal flop for C bet. He's probably calling me with uh, it did call enormously fast, so I don't think he's gonna fall to a double barrel here on the three. Uh unless he has something like pocket eights, nines, uh So I'm just gonna check again because there's a lot of kings in his range, in my opinion. I uh, could have made a three bet here uh, on table number one. Uh, he bets 40 cents. It's a small bet. I'm just gonna float him one on, once on this ace high flop and uh, take it from there. He checks back, and this is like huge advantage of having a uh, position. I'm just gonna bet 90 cents, and uh, he just folds. So. I can't stress enough how much position really, really matters. Uh, as you see, I folded ace queen to a three bet when I was out of position, but I called with pocket sixes and with ace jack when I was in position. It's really, really like for instance here. I have pocket fives. I this guy on the button uh, is probably going to three bet me again here with pocket fives, and well, he did not, he didn't three bet now. Um, Uh, I don't know why the guy on table number two keeps calling me. I'm just gonna keep on betting. Uh, and he falls on the river. <laughs> kind of weird. I don't know. Uh, six, seven. This is going to be a simple three bet. His ISO raising quite a bit here on table number one. Uh, it's gonna be a typical ISO raise, and we take it down. So when you learn how to read people and know when you can accelerate post flop and has have to slow down post flop whenever you get the grasp of this and believe me sometimes it's going to fail i can <laughs> actually before just before the video started um i was playing some 25 and all because i was going to make the video at 25 and all because i saw in the uh I was not going to talk about it actually because I was going to do a podcast about it. But anyways, um, sometimes you can't really expect too much of uh, these people. You can be more aggressive post flop, but don't expect them to fold any top pair type of hand. Um, unless the board gets really awkward, they are not folding top pair type of hands. And that's what uh, what I was trying to do. I exactly put a guy on ace queen. I made a three bet. He called a three bet and the flop king, queen high, jack and some lower cards. And essentially uh, I barreled him for three streets, knowing that he had ace queen. I'm thinking he's going to give up, uh, but uh, he just didn't. And he was a kind of a needy guy. I'm just Okay, I'm gonna shut up about that hand because <coughs> uh, because it will be in a podcast. Uh, pocket force table number one. Uh, all tables actually are fun, uh, especially when you hit sets. Uh, it seems yeah, no hands for so I'm gonna just do the usual. See, but I expect quite. Oh, there are two people in there. I should have made it a bit bigger than. Um, uh, 
Uh, that's not a good card on table. Uh, I have to go. That's not a good card here on table. I'm still. Uh, I'm still keep on betting though. Uh, you can't check and let him uh, check behind. Uh, unfortunately, he makes the fault. This is a bad card. It's a bad card for me. It's a bad card for him, essentially. If you don't know what I mean by that, uh, just ask in the forums. I explained it in uh, previous videos. Nine Jack, uh, get a guy who steals. Again, if it were suited, I would be. Uh, I'm just gonna call here and play post flop against them. I have position, which is really nice. We have an ace high dry flop. He checks to me, which is kind of weird because I expect him uh, to bet this a lot. If he checks, I feel like he's got some kind of value in there. Uh, so I'm just gonna test him out and if he calls this he definitely has got either a weaker ace or some pair like uh, some kind of pair which is not going to fall but the guy just check faults uh, I mean uh, seems like I, I, I was going to make a no but I see that uh, I closed down one of my tables so oh and I missed action on table number two doesn't really matter. Uh, again, uh, this seems like a reasonable squeeze here with uh, 9 jack. Uh, oh, I'm out of position. Should have made it a bit bigger. And we take it down on table number one. It's a lot, it's, it's really a lot of fun when you get the hang of it and actually you can be the the aggressor at the table. Oh, and by the way, this only works when you don't really care about the money. This is another thing. Uh, I was talking about position. Being able to accelerate or break post-flop and also don't be afraid to lose money because you're gonna lose a couple of... you... I mean... Uh, I'm just gonna keep on betting here on table number... Uh, for if I do get raised, I'm probably falling though, because I can't imagine a passive guy like him uh, raising. Well, okay, that's uh, now I'm just. Oh, I can't chip it in. Uh, I'm gonna have to bet like he's never folding a seven though, so I'm just gonna bet like full pot. I left him uh, his one dollar. Um, didn't really pay enough attention, should have. But did he show up? Yeah, he had a 7. If I shove, he also calls. And he ships in. I think he's shipping in really wide here. I'm just gonna call here with King Jack. Oh, he actually has an ace. So okay. And he hits the straight. Good friend. Uh, I'm gonna try to see if I can add in another table. Uh, still not getting really used to this uh, Poker Star software. <laughs> I'm playing on these Belgian type of sites. Uh, on which I can't make the oh, it's, it will never be interesting for you guys because it's solely for us. Um, I raised it, did I? What happened here? Uh, I don't. The thing is, if I call the small guy, it's probably gonna ship over, and I don't really wanna get into this kind of spot. Uh, I know I did. I think I raised from the button and with the jack. I, it doesn't really matter. Uh, let me see if I can find another table here. I don't want to be on any waiting list, so I'm just gonna take a table which has few players on. Put it there. Uh, somebody limps in from small blind to big blind, so raising it up with almost any two gives you a nice aggressive image and uh, basically you're gonna take it down like 90% of the time either pre-flop or post-flop uh, 
Uh, can Jack this guy limped in? We're gonna play this. Oh no, it's a new guy. Uh, I'm just gonna raise it up. Probably dunk posted. I don't know. Uh, he calls. Uh, really bad flop. Uh, especially when he limped in. I expect his range to be geared to small pairs and straight uh, unconnected type of hands. So I'm just gonna check this and actually give up with King High. Okay, for 10 cents, I'm not falling. And I'm not falling again for 10 cents. Again, same story on table number uh, three. Again, really horrible flop. Oh, man, I still want, I just want to call. I just want to see what he's doing here. Uh, with uh, he had actually had a6, so he limp calls with a6 offsuits. Uh, I'm gonna make a note about that in a minute. After I make a c bet on this one, horrible flop. Uh, it's really close to c bet even. Trying to make that know that he limp calls a six off. We hit a straight draw, I'm definitely betting. He raises and this is interesting because he only makes a min raise. I'm really getting really nice odds and I don't really want to ship it in uh, with only a straight throw. I do have an over pair but uh, he's giving me an excellent price. Uh, the 9 is uh, not a good card. He's still giving me an excellent price to draw here uh, so I'm just gonna call. Uh, obviously we never ever hit. And he ships in now, so I'm just falling. It's gonna be easy pickings, uh, that guy, uh, TNT. So. Thirty cent. Uh, oh, the guy is too short to make a three bet against him here on table number three. I want to get some ag uh, a rather aggressive image, but you have to be s still sensible about it. I mean, and you can you can have really so much fun when you are running people over, and in the end. You're gonna lose a few buy-ins with making a wrong read or uh, just trying to push people off a certain hand and they just don't want to fall because hey it's micro stakes uh, and they just don't don't uh, 25 cents it's kind of a small raise so 25 cents there is a donkey in the big blind so and he's gonna come along if I come along with the checking and I have position even if he doesn't come along I can play back against the 2417 guy on table number one actually they're both donkeys in the blinds uh, I should mention this it is Saturday uh, it's midday on a Saturday so probably gonna be a few more bad people around than usual and now we have the donkey in the pot and we have an, uh, an open ender Um, floating here. Hopefully the donkey comes along and we finally hit uh, a draw. No. Uh, I do have to mention that Sean Mikkel did see bet on a queen 10, two hearts into two people, so uh, when he bets here again, he's not falling, he's got something. Uh, when he's barreling in for two streets, my outs are kind of limited in the sense that if a hearts of nines or an ace, or an, an ace is going, might actually block uh, some of my actions, so 
chances are quite big that I don't get paid off even if I do hit uh, one of my outs. So I'm just gonna let it go here and not call the one thirty uh, one dollar thirty cents. King two suits. I'm actually gonna play it. Let's make it 25 cents. See if they really act any differently. Uh, we've got a huge calling station on my left, which is unfortunate that he's on my left. It's 10 cents again. He did this with middle pair. I do have a back door and I do have a king. Um, so I'm gonna call here and see what the turn brings for 10 cents and I'm basically now I'm giving up. Um, uh, three bending on table number three. It seems like a steal uh, type of uh, play by uh, G4 Ki on the button. Uh, we do get three bets here on table number four. Uh, I have no reason on the guy as of yet. Eleven hands. It's probably his first three bet also. Yeah, I'm just gonna fold for now. It's not suited to the ten jack. So uh, next time he does this, I'll probably uh, won't play so nice. Is 10 table number 2 obviously Mr. K well wow that's a huge squeeze and this is never ever a bluff he knows uh, that probably TNT is playing a lot of hands and uh, is not going to fold pre-flop so he just wanna get it, wanna get its heads up if it's a squeeze it's a bad one because I doubt that TNT it's a, although it's really big yeah it does make the fold TNT so it's interesting to notice that he does did fall to the three bet there. Let's take a, look, a quick look at the stats. Three bets, only five percent, two out of forty times. So I don't that squeeze was never ever a bluff. Uh, that's kind of something you gonna have to yeah, well with experience you get better at reading people and putting people on really really narrow ranges and once you determine their range you can determine your course of action to either fold out uh, a huge percentage of its range that beats you or either uh, make uh, your bet sizing as such or uh, make your actions as just that you uh, still get called by a percentage of his range that uh, that you beat. Um, uh, Jack eight. I wanted a three bet, but this seems like a guy forty four six, which is uh, useless to three bet against uh, out of position. Uh, I'm going to three bet him when, for instance, now on the button, if I uh, get anything decent. Not when I get five two suited. And we've got uh, pocket aces. And for well, we do on our left is a really uh, how to say uh, loose guy. So hopefully we get some action here with pocket aces. And with the ten king, as I said. Uh, in position, it's a lot of fun to play against the 15, 17 type of guys. Really, a lot of bad play people playing today. 
not the actually it's a horrible flop and I'm not even gonna see that this he did limp in so can have all kinds of stuff and I do have position uh, so I'm gonna make the call I do have two over cards and I do have position and if he folds that would be a nice result He doesn't fold. Uh, not to my, well. I'm not surprised he doesn't fold on that type of port. I'm just gonna check behind now, and hopefully hit a diamond, king, or a ten. No, it's a jack. Brief flop falls to three bets. Uh, I'm just afraid that if I three bet, that TNT is going to cold call. Uh, I'm gonna call and uh, make his life post flop a lot more. I'm not unhappy if TNT comes along. Um, I just have to be careful now because Opu is really nitty. So and this is not really the flop I was looking for. Um, for 15 cents half the pot, I can't really fold. Oh wow, we get raised by a super passive guy. Ah. Should have made the 3 bet pre flop, I guess. TNT is really screwing up my plan with a. It's just a loose passive. I, I think this is more annoying, this loose passive type of guy is on your left than, a, than an aggressive guy. He's literally, he was really playing like 90% of his hands, TNT. He's got a nice stack already, so I really want to stack him. Three-way pot on table number one. I'm gonna put some green tags on certain people. It's just easier to recognize. Jack five offsuit on. Got the knit play against the uh, calling station on table number two. If knit bets here, he's definitely he's, de he's definitely good. Uh, and he does bet. I'm getting a little bit. Of Stupid hands. We got a river raise. Never ever ever a bluff here on table number four. It's never a bluff, just fold, yeah. Good fold. Well, I don't like your fold because I want the calling station on my right to have a lot of money. But when they do this uh, river type of raises, uh, it's never ever a bluff. Queen five suited again. Uh, I'm on the button. It's suited. I know the calling station is going to come along, but uh, so be it. It's annoying when you never actually hit. He's gonna bet ten cents again. Uh, I'm just gonna let him have it. So. I'm just gonna wait until I am. Uh, well, against these guys, you can't do anything. Uh, you just wait until you hit and then you stack them. And, uh, ace 10. 
Uh, same play as before. I hope uh, the big blind comes along and uh, it doesn't really do uh, flop nicely. Top pair, top kicker. Uh, definitely betting here. And Jack Sue that's open, nobody comes along. King Jack off suits. Uh, if he calls on the button, it's gonna be a difficult hand if I don't hit a king or a jack, but uh, again, everybody folds. Is Jack suited on table number three and JRX? I have 300 hands on. Another guy comes along. I don't think I can ever win this uh, against two people. And although they're gonna play pretty straightforward, um, but still, I don't think it's worth a C bet here. Let's fall to uh, continuation bets quite a bit. And the other guy is a nitty guy, so I'm thinking this guy has like a pocket pair. So I'm just actually gonna do the C bet here uh, on a 10 5 3 and take it down with um, ace 4. I'm making the bet there with the ace 4 to make the hand uh, much more easier to play. If I check out somebody bets, um, uh, and I'm calling with the pocket tens to let the donkey come along there. And I'm calling here with the pocket nines also to give a chance uh, to the donkey to come along. Uh, always try to keep the donkeys in the pot. Oh wow, that's a huge squeeze. And this is fold the three, uh, three bets zero times. Uh, I'm not good here. I'm just gonna have to fold. Uh, here with the pocket nines, I'm gonna check to him. I'm obviously not falling. Uh, he does take a bet. He seems rather kind of passive previously and check falling. He does have position now, so I think he's betting uh, with quite a few hands here. Uh, I'm just gonna make the call. The ace of spades comes off. Which is not a good card, by the way. I think I'm even gonna fall to that uh, turn bet here. Yeah. I played it for set mining purposes, especially with the uh, donkey in the blind, so I shouldn't change uh, my mind uh, afterwards. Uh, nine queen. Uh, I did raise it up. It's a nice ace high flop. Uh, just a little c bet. Uh, hopefully he falls all of his non ace type of hands. It's kind of amazing that I, I don't hit a lot of flops today. Um, I don't know if he really has an ace. Uh, I don't know if he falls to a double barrel though. Uh, if it was a club, I would have double barrel. But now uh, I have nothing. So, I'm just checking and giving up. Again, Queen 10, we flop nothing. Uh, and I'm not even gonna see that this into two people. And I have to give up my Queen high here. I checked. So, basically, on table number 3, I have the best hand unless somebody has a better Queen. Can't really fold for this. Uh, sucks because the board is already paired. Uh, 
the guy is really passive, so... But I was getting a decent price, no matter what. Still, uh, I can't seem to hit any draws. Green table number two. Um, let me check. I don't really want to call. Also, three bets quite a bit. Uh, so I'm just gonna make it three bets here. I'm no. I'm pushing out the donkey on uh, in the big blinds. Does seem to think about it, Gal G Malmon. Um, by the way, King Queen was is not the best hand to three bet, and I'm not really three betting it for value. I'm three betting it because I know how to play the hand post flop and um, and get the most out of it. If any of my students were going to three bet King Queen, I would be frowning, especially out of position. Uh, also, the guy does fall to are you. Yeah, he falls to every three bet so far, so... It's Jack, and this, like, Jarex is putting me in spots where I like to put people into spots. He's three betting me on the button, and there's really nothing you can do about it. Uh, I'm gonna be out of position, I'm just gonna have to... Find my... There's really nothing you can do... Uh... Just give up, you can switch tables at, at least at the micro stakes, you should be, consider yourself still lucky uh, to be able to switch, uh, to be able to switch tables. I'm raising 10 king off suiting table number 4, reason being donkey in the blinds, which is, who is going to give me a lot of money if I hit the king or 10. Don't, but it's not a bad flop, uh, just a simple c-bet here. Here he's doing this with a lot of, but I have king high and I will not even did not flush draw, so uh, he can have it. But I don't think that his range is that strong here. Um, although people do not, in, uh, I think w what I mean is his. Okay, let me explain this. When he's raising this type of boards, he's usually not gonna give up after I ship because either he's raising me with like a good hand or with a draw. And when I ship over him, he's gonna convince himself that I might be drawing and that's why I'm shipping. Or when he's uh, drawing, he is going to say, okay, I uh, I still have my draw and I don't care about... Uh... Wait, because uh, there's a lot of hands going on and... Uh... I'm gonna bet here with the ace jack, hopefully to fold out... Um... Oh my, I'm doing stupid plays here. Um, I might have the best hand still, but I hopefully can fall up like pocket 7s, pocket 8s, pocket 9s. Uh, with the ace king, I made a 3 bet. Flop constant, 7 twos. Um, not the best flop. I'm gonna have to make a bet though. Hopefully, it didn't hit anything. Uh, and it's just going to give up. Uh, 
I'm just going over the hands, what my thinking is. Okay, he raised on the button. Pretty, pretty wide range. Flop is really dry, so he can't have a lot on this flop. So I floated him. Even out of position, I floated him, uh, knowing that he's kind of passive. So probably not double barreling all that often. Ace Jack suited. Um, I'm just gonna 3 bet hit here. Uh, I think calling. Makes calling is gonna be is uh, is gonna be really difficult in that spot. I rather have the initiative there, even though I don't expect to get uh, called a whole lot by by a whole lot worse than uh, his jack. Maybe something like queen jack and stuff like this. Where queen jack suited and stuff like this is going to call uh, king jack suits. Um, Maybe Jack Tan. Uh, people like to call with like suited type of connectors. Again, uh, table number one. There's <laughs> nothing I can do against the calling station here. I'm just gonna check behind on that board. Yeehaw, we turn the ace. Um, it's a ten dollars cents and pounds. Okay, I'm just gonna raise it up. Charge his drops. Uh, charge his draws, I mean. He calls. Um, river bats. It's kind of thin uh, for value. Uh, I'm, he's never gonna call a huge bet if he has a pair. If he has a misdraw, he's never calling. Um, maybe a pair of tens. It's really close here, essentially. Like a fifty dollar cent that maybe still gets called by ah, I don't know. Let's see if I can squeeze out a little bit of value with the fifty and it's borderline. Oh he raises, I'm just falling now when he does this. I'm really getting a decent price though, but this is never a bluff. Um, any instant min raised. Uh, it's never a bluff. I'm getting an on a way some price on fifty cents. I only have to be correct like one other four five times. I think uh, I don't think I'm that correct that often. Uh, don't know why he why he wouldn't raise on the turn again when I dunks and then I raise and he didn't re raise. Uh, I didn't. But, uh, Talking myself into a call, I think I'm gonna make the call. Uh, river raises are never bluffs. Uh, except today. <laughs> it's so, yeah, it's kind of difficult to explain it. It's not difficult to explain it because his, the way he played the hand didn't make much sense, and now he's doing, he's annoyed, making a min 3 bet. I have pocket nines, so I'm just gonna call it. We're gonna get a huge pot and uh, I'm gonna explain what I did. It, uh, normally, I uh, stupid that I just said that river raises usually are never bluffs. Okay, so let's explain. Um, he dunk bets on the turn, min dunk bets on the turn. Usually that's already a sign of weakness. It's it's not ever gonna have. A, it's usually not gonna have a ten, a pair of tens when. I'm calling here with. For calling for the split pot. Oh no, uh, if he. I'm actually have a pair of sixes, so it's for me. Uh, I'm just folding here the nines. Fortunately, we didn't hit our cent. Okay. He min dunks to me. Then he calls a raise when the ace comes. Uh, on the turn, uh, it gets checked through. On the flop, it gets checked through. On the turn, he min dunks. A raise. Uh, he merely calls. If he has something like. 
I mean, on the river, when I make the bet and he raises me, what hands is he merely is beating me that is raising the river and not raising me on the turn? So basically, I can't find any hand. Uh, maybe some ace jack. That I don't know if he would even raise the river with ace jack. Uh, if I, I don't think he would raise the river with ace jack as passive as he is. Uh, he just left the table. He was fifty nine four, as you can still see. So I, I made the call here. I previously in the video I said, okay, river raises never plus, but this completely made no sense at, at all. Uh, and I was getting a great price. Uh, if he pots it there or makes a huge raise, I'm falling. Uh, that's the funny thing. Uh, Again, set mining table number one. We're gonna have to hit a set once. And ten queen suits uh, versus under the gun uh, race. I'm just out of position, so I'm just gonna fold. If I were in position, a uh, three bet would be uh, one of uh, the things I could do. And six suits. I kind of, uh, I'm not playing as aggressive as I wanted to to be uh, in the beginning of the video, just because there's so many. Look at these guys. I mean, games are not that. I know there are a lot of, but the, the gameplay is a lot more different than it used to be. But still, uh, there's on each table you should have a a, a huge fish. So, like for instance, table number one, I would be leaving. Uh, three bending the nine eight to the top. And I don't know if I'm gonna bother even. Uh, and I'm probably three bending this too. Uh, it doesn't fall to three bets all that often. So, I'm, I'm gonna make the call and make his life a little bit harder post flop. Here with the ace king, it's. I'm gonna get floated so often out of uh, me being out of position, and I'm just betting here on the 3 3 5 flop. Makes the call. Uh, the 7, I'm not gonna. Uh, the 7 is actually not that bad. I'm just gonna barrel again uh, if he was floating me uh, to 20. Uh, I do have some outs. With the sevens, I mean. Oh, uh, with the six, I mean. And it got checked through. I was going to bet on table number four. Uh, I think I'm. Uh, have to give up here on table number. Uh. Yeah, I have to give up here. When it floats twice on three three. Oh wow. Up. Why? <laughs> Floats me. I knew he was floating me. Um, then he turns a flash draw, so he calls again with the flash draw. That's unfortunate. Because when he, when he floats the flop and the turn, I can't really put him on a hand that's gonna fall to the to a river. Don't know if I really like his flop floats. Well, he's just floating me, probably trying to take it away later. He's nine eight. I mean. He does get kind of, probably kind of frust. Well, I don't know. Uh, his his pre-flop call is already meh. Uh, 
So uh, it's probably trying to adapt to me. Maybe I've triggered him before. I don't know. Uh, probably I did. Uh, Yeah, I think I played it. I think I played fine. He kind of got lucky. He also didn't bet on the river, which is kind of uh, how would I say uh, passive. Uh, he had ace high. Uh, I don't know if he really thought that he had showdown value with ace high. Mm. Okay, Jarex makes a three bet here. Uh, from the blinds, he does this quite a bit. Uh, thing is, if I call, the donkey is going to come along too. And um, that's is not gonna be fun. Uh, so I'm just gonna let him have it here. Uh, he squeezes. I obviously can make a re squeeze, but I'm just gonna fold. When he squeezes with the donkey in, in the pot too, I'm putting his range a bit stronger than I otherwise would. He probably knows that the donkey is un incapable of falling, so I doubt, well, I doubt that he's doing it that light. Now he bets half the pot. And the donkey min race as well, it's a little over a min race. A10 offsuit, I'm gonna 3 bet the Nit who uh, just raised me. The reason being I 3 betting here with the 8-9, uh, 8 10 offsuit is that I 3 bet he solved the showdown and I 3 betted him light with, I don't know, remember, 8-9 something suited. So he knows that I know, well, I mean, he knows that I'm capable of 3 betting light, but he also knows that I know that he knows, well, what I want to say is, uh, I'm not gonna 3-bet light twice in a row. Normally you don't 3-bet light twice in a row because you know that the other guy just saw your... God damn it, can I ever hit something today? Uh, he's king. Uh, I'm just gonna have to check full again here on 7-8, 7-8-10 queen. I mean, again, it's a flop. Just uh, hits about anyone. Uh, everyone. Anyway, um, uh, what I wanted to show in the video came out like pretty early that when these aggressive guys are on your left, you just have to take it takes some hand reading ability, some guts, and some binds, but you can't let yourself uh, get run over by guys uh, like that. They Keep on betting here. The ace is not a good because he could have been calling with the ace of hearts, uh, but I can't really uh, allow him to draw freely for a heart, so I'm gonna have to barrel there. And get a fold. I'm gonna sit out on all my tables. Tables are breaking up anyway. Um. Let's see if I can 3 bet that guy. I've also 3 bet 71% of the time. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna 3 bet him. Uh, 
Again, on table number um, 3, it's not the best flop yet again. Um, I do have a backdoor, so that's the sole reason why I'm, I'm betting. And I have position. If I were out of position, I would not uh, make a bet there. Okay, and with this, I'm gonna close down the video. In the beginning, uh, I nicely saw that these guys were playing loose aggressive, make mistakes, but well, you just have to uh, get a read on them, um, know what to do post flop, and you get there with experience. Uh, you try posting hands, whether it was a good idea or not. Also, don't o overestimate your opponents. This is, this is micro stakes. I mean, uh, when they hit top pair, usually you're not gonna find a fault by them. Uh, when they hit top pair, they usually are not going to fault, no matter uh, how much pressure you put on them. Uh, so, uh, don't worry too much about the loose aggressive uh, guys trying to run you over. You've uh, join the great site and uh, watch the videos see how we deal with it and uh, just uh, copy it okay so uh, well not copy it just uh, understand why we do certain plays against these uh, type of guys and try to implement it in your game uh, post if it fails just it, it's gonna fail uh, it fails with me too uh, once in a while I make the wrong read um, post it in the forms and hopefully uh, well more than likely you will get a response by uh, one of the instructors so this was Colossus for Grand School see you guys